Did you know that India is building a megastructure visible from space? It's happening in Andhra Pradesh, a region home to 50 million people and some of the worst climates on Earth. When it rains here, it pours enough to cause massive floods. When it dries, it turns fertile ground into a wasteland. This ambitious construction is supposed to solve the issue once and for all. However, if this multi-billion dollar project backfires, the consequences could be devastating. Let's see why. The second longest river in India is called the Godavari. During the monsoon season, this river acts like a fire hose that nobody can turn off. We aren't talking about a drizzly afternoon. From June to September, the sky practically unzips. The water level rises and the river transforms from a calm stream into a chaotic force that swallows entire villages in days. But that's not all. A huge amount of that fresh water goes completely to waste. It rushes past the villages and dumps straight into the Bay of Bengal. Once it hits the salty ocean, it's useless for drinking or farming. We're talking about billions of gallons of much-needed water disappearing into the sea every single year. Now, on the other hand, we have the Krishna River Basin, just a few hundred miles away. There, it's literally the opposite issue. Farmers are staring at dry cracks in the ground. They're praying for rain that never comes. And Krishna does not get strong monsoon support, and most of its water is already used up before it even reaches this region. By the time it arrives, it's more like a tired stream than a healthy river. That's why the authorities looked at the map and came up with a solution. Basically, take the excess water from the angry river and push it over to the dry river. This brings us to the Pulavaram. The engineers are building a structure that's a giant machine, not just a wall. It's built to connect these two massive water systems, like running a giant pipe from the side that has too much to the side that has almost nothing. The project combines a massive earth and rock dam with a hydropower plant and a network of canals. However, the most impressive part of this layout is the spillway. It's a giant complex of concrete, channels, and support systems. It looks less like a dam and more like a fortress built for titans. It's a gigantic safety valve for the earth. It stretches for close to a mile across, wider than 10 football fields placed side by side, and rises several dozen feet above the riverbed. It's fitted with dozens of huge steel gates, each one weighing hundreds of tons, and built to hold back walls of water until the system decides to let them go. The spillway is incredibly powerful. It has a discharge of around 5 million cusecs. In simple terms, it can blast out millions of cubic feet of water every single second. That puts it in the same league as the spillway at China's Three Gorges Dam, one of the most powerful flood control structures on the planet. Engineers designed it to handle what they call a thousand-year flood. And no, that doesn't mean you need to mark your calendar for the year 3026. It just means there's a 0.1% chance that a flood this massive will hit the valley in any given year. Why are the architects so obsessed with these safety statistics? Because the location leaves no room for error. The Godavari Delta downstream is home to millions of people. If this project backfires, meaning the dam breaches or the gates fail during a storm, it wouldn't just be a leak. It would be a human-made tsunami. The water meant to save the region would instead wipe it off the map. The construction pace of the Polovarum project matches this insane scale. In 2019, the workers on this site set a Guinness World Record. They poured 42,000 cubic yards of concrete in exactly 24 hours. If you loaded all that concrete into standard mixers, you would fill 4,000 trucks. Line them up bumper to bumper, and you'd get a traffic jam stretching for 22 miles. Even with that in mind, the project still has a way to go. It's so big that it starts to bend its own surroundings. It won't just stop or redirect water. It might change the air itself. Once the dam is complete, it will hold a reservoir so large that it'll function like a brand new inland sea. Put that much water under the Indian sun and something obvious will happen. It'll lift into the air. Day after day, the surface will turn into a giant steam engine sending moisture upward. Scientists call this a microclimate, but we call it accidental weather control. 
By creating a massive body of water, you change the local humidity and temperature. You're essentially installing a giant humidifier in a region that used to be dry. This is the part that makes experts nervous. What if they accidentally create a new climate problem while trying to solve the current one? Once you block a river and create a lake this big, you start messing with the heat and moisture in the air above. The system meant to control water on the ground ends up influencing the weather overhead too. Then there is the issue of moving the water. Picture the state as two giant tanks. One is overflowing and about to burst. The other is dry. The engineers are trying to connect them with a massive pipe to balance the levels before either one becomes a disaster. How are they doing this? To pull this off, they're carving out the earth, digging two massive canals, each stretching more than 100 miles. These aren't simple ditches. They're artificial rivers carved to ignore the natural layout of the land and go where engineers tell them to go. In 2022, monsoon floods slammed into the site mid-build. Water forced its way past temporary barriers and damaged critical leak control work. The crew had to stop, assess the damage, and start restoring the damaged sections. And the risks aren't just about concrete breaking. The real cost of this project is human. To build the city of water, you have to remove the real cities of people. When the reservoir fills, it will submerge nearly 250 square miles of land. That much water does not make room for anyone. Close to 200,000 people would have to be relocated. Old forests, tribal lands, and villages that stood for generations will disappear beneath the surface. This is the price of the project. So with all this concrete and chaos, when does the ribbon get cut? Here's the twist. This project has been ongoing since the 1940s, back when the British were still in charge. The foundation stone appeared in 1980. Real work waited until 2004. It's a rare piece of infrastructure that has outlived conflicts and economic crashes, yet it's still under construction. Major parts of the main dam are incomplete. The reservoir cannot be filled to its full height. And key power systems have not been installed. Several resettlement zones also remain unfinished, which means the final stage of the project is still years away. Aside from the ambition and the scale, money is also the reason it takes so long. Early plans estimated about $1.5 billion. Today, the cost has passed $6.5 billion and keeps climbing. But is it worth the price? Depends on who you ask. For the farmers watching their fields dry out, the answer is yes. For the families watching their homes get swallowed by the reservoir, the answer is no. The latest deadline for completion is by the end of this decade, so there are no more excuses. The Polovarum project is a testament to human ambition. It's humans looking at Mother Nature and saying, I think you put that river in the wrong place. Let me fix that for you. Will it work? And how well? We'll find out soon. Until then, the Godavari will keep flowing and overflowing while the Krishna will keep shrinking, looking like an abandoned movie set. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.